My name is Enrique Torres, and I'm a dancer. You actually thing? were the first one to taught him a move. No, yeah, he was, what, 12 at that time? No. 11. 10? 10. <laughs> that was when he decided to dance like Michael Jackson. I was trying to learn every single move that, that he was doing on stage. And that? the first move he wanted to do was the, the moonwalk. moonwalk. I want to dance like Michael Jackson. I want to do it. I want to do beat it. I want to, you know, it was like, I'm like, oh. When I did the talent show in fifth grade with my friend Ethan, it changed my whole world. He had no dancing bone. At least I thought. I didn't know how to tell them. No, at least I was scared because I just kept thinking of the kids making fun of him, you know, because he'd been bullied. I was afraid of all of that. Always getting picked on for getting in trouble for nothing, but, but when I found dance, it's like, this is how I express myself. It just takes me to a different place that just helps me escape from reality. It, it just allows me to, to be, you know? It allows me to, to create, it just takes me to a place without no name. It's such a beautiful art that like, it comes from so much creativity. That's what I like about it. First time I was here at IDA, I was like 15. I'm learning from the founder of Academy of Villains, Christopher Farside Jennings himself, was like the, the best moment I've had in that studio. And now like three years later, and I'm sitting, I'm, I'm sitting in the chair here, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm like hearing music, and it's still weird right now. <laughs> I just, just seeing myself here, not, not dancing. In exchange for, for the hours that I work, my doctor's always giving me like physical therapy workout sessions. Is it tedious to work? Uh, not really. I found this I found this kind of interesting because yeah. I never really I don't know I never really did this often before. I was always busy with dance for the most part, but this is it's different. Yeah. Enrique injured his knee and. August of this year. Oh, that was kind of heartbreaking that he took a break from dance because he wasn't able to get into the, um, to the scholarship that he really wanted. I think it still continues to be something, you know, challenging for Enrique. But I know that day was very difficult for him to accept or to hear. They were all telling me, yeah, you need to be, be off that knee if, if you want to get back up there and perform on that stage. There's always that one point where, where I, w I just want to get up and dance or just like, you know, I, I, I just want to go full out like so bad. doesn't really stop me from doing upper body movements. He's starting to get himself back up, you know, and I, I see his creativity starting to come back up. He's excited and looking forward to doing Halo in February. They found out about my, my story, about how I was diagnosed at three and how dance has, has saved me. And No matter how hard things get, it's only temporary.